What's up everybody, welcome back. So let's continue working on our security camera system. What we did in the previous video was pretty similar to what Epic did in the example project, except that ours is set up for replication. So I want to go over a few things that don't make a lot of sense to me, and then I'm going to continue working on our own system. So let's dive into it. Let's get the camera blueprint up and first of all I renamed a few components so everything makes a little bit more sense. So I have the camera base mesh, the camera lens and I renamed the view trigger as well. So now first of all you want to make sure that you attach the capture component to the camera lens and not to the base. So that was a mistake on my side. So now it will actually rotate with the lens of the camera. And now we're gonna go to the event graph and we're gonna change the way we set up these clamps over here. So it doesn't really make sense to calculate them every tick because they are gonna be the same every time. So we're gonna move this to the construction script and just use a few variables. So I've created four variables already, min pitch, max pitch, and minimum yaw and maximum yaw. So we're gonna plug those into the clamps over here. So then we can just calculate them once and we should be good to go. So those are plugged in. Let's get all of these nodes over here. And let's move those to the construction script. So over here uh, we first add our pitch and then we set the default rotation. So we're going to want to change that around so we don't actually have our pitch included in our default rotation. But we can get rid of this variable altogether because we don't need to store it anymore. So let's paste all of this in right here. Let's get rid of the variable right away. And now we're going to simply connect this world rotation up to the brake rotator. So this is a bit messy. So and now we're going to set our variables in here so the min pitch max pitch min yaw maximum yaw and then we should be good to go for the clamps so i'm gonna use the literal float uh, for the pitch that's fine and for the yaw i'm gonna plug in our camera search angle so we're actually applying that over here as well and then we can hook them up to our setters So everything should work over here. Then we can set our camera pitch. So we can plug it in right here. And now I'm also going to create a new variable for our texture render target. So I'm going to call this texture render target as well. And that's going to be a texture render target 2D. And the texture render target. And we're going to make this instance editable. So compile and save. Now I'm going to drag in my scene capture component over here. And I'm going to drag off and say set target. So I'm going to set the texture target over here. And we're going to use our new variable. So plug that in and connect these up as well. So now we can remove the default variable from the uh, component over here and we set it in the construction script so we are good to go over there so now in the event graph where we disable event tick for the clients i want to also remove their scene capture component and their view trigger because clients don't need them the server handles everything so let's get rid of these right away so we're going to destroy these components So we should be good to go over here as well. So I think we have a little bit of smoothing out done. We have our variables plugged in over here. So we should be good to go. Everything should still work. Let's double check to make sure. Oh, come on. Looks okay to me. So let's start by creating our interface. Let's right click, go to blueprints and then select the blueprint interface. So I'm going to call this BPI take damage. 
and open it up. So for the function, I'm going to call it take damage as well and give it one input and that's going to be the damage amount. So that's going to be a float. And then we are good to go for the interface. So compile and save it. And I'm going to add it to the security camera blueprint. So open up the blueprint, go to the class settings, and then we can add the interface over here. So BPI take damage. And then we need to compile and save to be able to call the event. And then we're going to call our new damage event. So take damage. And we want the event. So over here you can see it's the interface event. Now we want to create a few variables as well. So let's create a new one and call this is destroyed. That's a boolean. And we also need the health variable. So let's create another one and call this health. And that's a float. So for the health, we're going to set the default value to 100. And for is destroyed, it's false. So that's fine. But we do want to make the destroyed variable replicated. So make sure you set that as well. And now let's start building the event over here. So first of all, we're going to add a branch to see if we are destroyed or not. And if we are not destroyed, we're going to uh, set the new health variable. So let's drag in a setter. Let's get a getter as well. And then we're going to subtract the amount of damage over here. And store that in our new health variable setter. And now all we need to do is check if we are smaller than or equal to zero. <coughs> so we're adding another branch over here. And if we are, the camera is destroyed. So we're going to create another event and we're going to call that uh, event destroyed. <coughs> and we're going to call this event over here. And let's create the destroyed event right away. So first of all, we're going to set our is destroyed variable and make sure we set it to true. Then we're going to stop our timeline. So I'm going to create another custom event over here and call this stop timeline. And plug it into the stop pin. And then I'm going to call this event over here. So stop timeline. There we go. Now I'm also going to disable the tick on this actor. So set tick enabled. Now remember we are back on the server side. So I'm going to uh, disable it. We already disabled it for the clients, but for the server it's still running. So I'm going to disable it over here. And I'm going to make sure with the event call that only the server will call this. So we're going to make sure that's going to happen correctly. Now I'm going to destroy the camera mesh. So we need to get a multicast event for that. Let's get a custom event in here. Call this multicast destroy camera. And we need to make sure that this is a multicast event. And then we're going to drag in our camera lens component and we're going to destroy it. So it will get destroyed for all clients and the server. And since we are already in a multicast event over here, let's drag in our particle system and let's activate it. So we have our smoke playing for all the clients and for the server. So set active. And make sure that we activate it over here. And now for the server, we still need to delete our view trigger and our scene capture component. So let's drag in those two and let's delete them over here in the event destroyed. Because over here we are still on the server side and over here we are multicasting. So make sure we destroy these ones over here. Destroy component and plug in both of them. And then we should be able to destroy our camera, I think. So we need to make sure that we call this event from the player. So if we go back to our player first person character. 
So if you have a line trace weapon, you're going to go to the line trace hit event and you're going to look for the hit actor. If you're using a projectile, there should also be a hit event in there that provides you with a hit actor. So we're going to continue from there. And first I'm going to create a few events. So let's create a custom event and call this event deal damage. And I'm also going to create another custom event and call the deal damage. And a third custom event and that's going to be server deal damage. So for the server deal damage you want to replicate it to run on server. And from this deal damage event over here we're going to call our uh, BPI damage interface. So take damage the message event. And we can drag in this onto the event node and it will create the amount variable for us. So make sure that you create both the target and the amount variables. Let's line them up. So let's do it like this. So from the server deal damage we're going to call our deal damage event. So deal damage. And we also need the variables in here. So again we can just drag them onto the node and they will be created for us. And now from the event deal damage I want to check if we are authority. So if we are the server or not has authority. If we are the server we're simply going to call the deal damage event directly. And make sure that we get our actor over here. And for the damage I'm just going to use a fixed amount right now. You can obviously also plug these into the events and calculate them and whatever you prefer. So for now I'm just going to use a static value. And for the client I'm going to call our server deal damage. And also make sure we plug in the target over here. Set the damage amount. And now all we need to do is call this right after we got our weapon. So let's make sure we plug it somewhere in between here. And let's call our event deal damage. And for the target we're going to plug in the hit actor from the line trace and then just continue over here. No that's not really what we want to do by the way. So first of all we want to get the hit actor over here and we want to see if this implements our interface. So we're going to get a does implement interface node. Let's get a branch over here, plug this in and make sure we connect this up like we should. So if this is true, we're going to call our event deal damage event with our hit actor. And if it's false, we're going to continue where we left off. So it's a bit messy over here, but it should make sense I think. So over here make sure you select your uh, damage interface. And now we should be good to go. So if a client calls this it's going to tell the server to deal damage for him. And otherwise the server is going to call the deal damage event directly. So let's see if we are able to destroy our cameras now. No, we are not. Okay, let me double check. Okay, so uh, you want to plug in this into the false pin, obviously. So if we are not destroyed, then we can continue over here. So that's a little mess up. And then uh, for the event destroyed, you also want to make sure you call our multicast event. So we want to call our MC destroy camera. And now everything will work the way it should. So we can shoot at our camera and it will disappear and a smoke screen will appear. And it will work for both the client and the host. At least it should. So there we have it. We are now able to destroy our cameras. So that's nice. So we're going to continue by adding a first person character controller and adding some... Uh, stuff in there. 
So first of all, let's create a new player controller and then we're going to add some stuff to our HUD and we're going to set up an interface so we can interact with the, the security system. So let's create a player controller first because we don't have one yet. And we're going to call this something like first person controller. Now we don't really need to do anything in here yet, so just make sure you have one. And then we're going to open our game mode and make sure that we assign it. So the player controller class and change it to your first person controller. Compile and save. And let's make sure that in your first person character you're changing it up as well. So depending on if you already have that set up or not. And depending on if you're using this project or not. So in the event begin play, we create the HUD for the local player and we are going to switch this up to be a first person player controller. So let's disconnect this and let's change the variable type. First person controller. Change it. And now we need to cast this first. So let's get a little bit of room in here and cast to our first person controller. So it locally controlled is true. If the cast succeeds, let's plug it in like this. And I think the only other place where we use it is in the show HUD event. So that should still be good. That should still work. So we are good to go with our new player controller. And let's create another interface so we can interact with the terminals. So that's Go to the blueprints and the blueprint interface. And I'm going to call this my BPI interact. And open it up. So the function, I'm going to call it something like interact with actor. Interact with actor. And I'm going to give it one input and that's the user player controller. So the user controller. And that's our first person controller. Uh, first person controller, and that one. So compile and save. And we're going to implement this interface into our first person character. So go to the class settings over here, add an interface, and add our interact interface. And let's create the events for it as well. So let me double check. No, we don't need to add it to the first person character. I'm sorry. So let's remove it. We need to add it to the terminal later on, but we do need to add the events in here. So we are going to go to the event graph and we do not have the interface implemented. That's fine. So we're going to use a key to interact with actors. So I'm just going to use a keyboard event right now and I'm not going to set up a key bind. So let's say if I'm using F to interact with objects, then I need to create a new variable in here and that's going to be my interactable actor. So interactable actor and that's going to be an actor. And first of all, I'm going to drag off here and get an is valid node. And I want to know if my interactable actor is valid or not. And after that, I want to know if I have authority. So if I am the server or not. And then we need to create a few events. So first of all, let's get a custom event. And I'm going to call this a BPI interact with actor. And I'm also going to create a server version. So let's create another custom event and call this a server interact with actor. So from the BPI one, I'm going to call the interface message event. So let's get the interact with actor event. And I want to get the message. So the user controller and the target, we're going to make those variables. So let's drag them onto the node and the variables will be created for you. 
So from the server version, we're going to call the BPI version again. So let's get BPI interact with actor and again, create the variables. So the server one needs to be set to replicate to run on server. So clients can call this version and then the server can call this version directly. So we're going to do that over here. So if we have authority, we're going to call the BPI one, BPI interact with actor. And if we are a client, we're going to call the server one. And now all we need to do is get our interactable actor in here. So that is our target. And for the controller, we can use the variable that we already had in here. And make sure you plug them into both nodes. So that should work. So now we have our interface set up for the player. And let's go to the HUD and let's create a hint for us to show up. So I'm going to go to the widgets folder. And I already have a simple HUD with a crosshair set up. So I'm just going to add it to that. Let's get a little bit of text in here, drag it onto the scene and I'm going to anchor it to the center. Now let's say uh, this is going to be my uh, hint interact. And I want to make this a variable, so enable it over here. And for the text, I'm going to set it to something like uh, press F to access security. And let's make it a little bit smaller. So something like this maybe. Let's get it nicely aligned. So 300. Let's put this at 0. And this at minus 150 maybe. And then let's get the Y and put it at 0 0.5. No, that's wrong. The X one. There we go. So by default, I'm going to set this to be hidden. And then let's go to the event graph and let's create a function so we can toggle it. So uh, let's create a new function and call this toggle interact hint. And I'm going to add a branch in here and simply drag it onto the node so we can create a new condition. And I'm going to say, is it visible or not? And then we're going to simply switch the visibility. So let's get it in here and set visibility. So if we want it to be visible, that's fine. And otherwise we want it to be hidden. Plug it into the target, connect it up. And we are good to go for this little function. Compile and save this. So we have our HUD set up as well. Now let's go into the first person character and let's create the functions to show the, uh, the hint that we just created. So we have that set up for later. Uh, let's see. First of all, I'm going to create a function for it and call that UI show interact hint or something similar. So UI show interact hint. And again, I'm going to make sure that I get a condition in here. So let me just drag in the in-game HUD and get the function toggle interact hint. And I can plug it in like this. And that's really all we need to do in here. But for clients, we need to make sure that we have a replicated event. So we're going to go back to our event graph and we're going to create a client version. So let's create a custom event. And I'm going to call this uh, client UI go interact hint. And this needs to be set to replicate to run on owning client. So if the server calls it, it will tell the 
owning client to execute this and then we're going to simply call our function from here and let's create a variable for this as well so we have this set up we're going to use it later but it's good that it's in place so let's get it out of the way right away let's continue by creating our security terminal from where we'll actually be able to access and uh, control the cameras so I have created a blueprint actor and I have simply added two cube meshes and resized them a little bit so we have a base and something that can perform as a screen so that's all I did in here and we're gonna add a trigger to it as well so we're gonna add another component and look for a box collision and let's add that as well and call this a trigger make sure over here for the collision presets i'm gonna set it to trigger as well so that should work the way is as it's intended now for the screen we need to create a material so i'm gonna go back to the content browser and let's right click go to materials and let's create a normal material and i'm gonna call this something like terminal screen material and open it up now i'm going to keep this really simple and i'm just going to drag in my texture render target from here uh, no that's not what we want to do i'm sorry we're going to right click and we're going to search for a parameter 2d and we're going to use a texture sample parameter and for the parameter you can uh, give it a name so i'm going to call this a screen render target And now we can assign our uh, texture render target over here and make sure that we plug it into the emissive color. So we have a really simple material set up for our screen, but we are able to assign the texture to it uh, using this parameter. So let's close it and let's assign it to our screen mesh. So that's our terminal screen. And you can see it's already projecting onto it, so it's working so we have that set up now we're going to create a variable in here for our texture render target let me double check yes that's what we're going to do so we're going to create a texture render target variable and that is going to be a texture render target a 2d one again compile and save it so uh, we're going to make it instance editable so we can assign it to every instance uh, differently so speaking is hard sometimes so let's get to the construction script and we're going to create a dynamic material instance for our material so we can change it on the fly so we're going to drag in our uh, screen and on the right side when we have the screen selected for the components we need to look at the element index to check what element our screen material is in so we only have one element so element zero is the one we need so we're going to look for a create dynamic material instance node and we're going to need to plug in the screen so it already did that for us so this is the element index we need to make sure that's matching our model so it is we can leave these two the way they are and i'm going to create a variable from this and call this a screen material instance And then I'm going to set the texture parameter value. So I'm going to drag off here again or here. That doesn't matter. And set parameter. And then I'm going to use the set texture parameter value. And for the value, we want to drag in our texture render target variable that we created. And for the parameter name, we're going to use the name that we entered in the material. So let me double check. That's the screen render target. So I'm just going to copy and paste it. So over here, we make sure we assign the proper render target to our material. 
And now I think if we drag this into the map, we should at least be able to see the camera on the screen for now. So let's get the security terminal in here. Oh, come on, no collision. And let's double check. So we need to assign the texture render target. So we need to select it over here. And make sure that the texture render target is set to the one we created. And for the camera, we need to do the same thing. So the camera and the terminal need to have the same texture render target assigned to them. And now it should work. There we go, we can see what the camera is seeing. So that's working. So I think I'm gonna leave it at this for now and we're gonna get back to this in the next episode. So thanks for watching everybody and talk to you later. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video or you think you might have learned something, please consider leaving a like. I'll be back for more.